Uh, Timothy is in Harrogate. Timothy, what would you like to say? Hi, morning, James. I've just been listening to the programme. Um, I used to be immigration minister in the UK between 95 and 97. I'm a conservative, and yes. uh, I'm quite proud of uh, I'm quite proud of our record generally. Well, then, then it was it was, it was a proudish record then, wasn't it? Well, I'm not going to sort of <laughs> this, you know say it on a personal basis. No. All I would say to you is that I was also an MEP in, in in Europe for many years, and I was responsible for drafting or helping to draft the Dublin uh, Agreement, um, which of course gave us the right, as you rightly say, to return um, applicants from this country to another country in Europe, certainly. Yes. Um, and, of course, we lost that when we left the European Union. So <sighs> we are limited in terms of what we can do. Mm. Um, I, I'm not in favour of Rwanda because I voted against it and I've spoken against it. You're Lord um, Kirkhope, I, just for, for, for anybody listening. Tim, Timothy Kirkhope, that's right, isn't it? That's correct, yes. yes well, um, I you. mean, my, my, uh, what you're saying is quite right in a sense. I mean, asylum seekers cannot be illegal per se. Um, but if you're an asylum seeker, uh, you're a person who actually is looking for help, um, whatever, however you get to wherever you are. And I think the answer is our, our record in this country has been a proud one. I was part of what I thought was quite a, a good operation where... We looked at every case under the UN Convention, you know, the United Nations Convention on Refugees. Yes. If people met the criteria, James, we would admit them, even if they did not meet the full criteria. We had a way of giving people leave to remain if, if we felt that it was uh, humane to do so. Yes. And as a result of that, this country has not got the largest number of refugees by any means. I mean, we are, we're quite small compared with most European countries, certainly. Yes. But we've got a good record on that. And I think it's a shame that we're ending up now with a situation where, you know, it's almost lumping in asylum seekers with, uh, with immigrants, which mm. is a different thing altogether. And I think that's where the government's got it wrong, frankly. Well, I, 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 I don't want to... Uh, I'm sure you've got your wits about you and you wouldn't... I wouldn't be able to do anyway, but but I, I mean, it's not happened by accident to this government. They haven't accidentally started conflating sort of immigration in general with asylum seeking and and refugees, have they? Well, I mean, the position I'm not in the government. Um, <laughs> I am a conservative still, um, and my view is that the, the and I have reminded ministers on many occasions that the two things are separate. Yes. Um, that, that our record is a good one. We need to maintain that record and we need to find legal ways in which people can apply for asylum so their cases can be properly considered. And I think the trouble we've got at the moment is this business of these poor people in boats yes. is, is a very sad reflection on the situation we've got where we don't have the right kind of discussions going on between ourselves and our European neighbours anymore. And that is that saddens me. I'm not I'm one of those blasted people that are called Ramonas, if you know what I mean. But <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to I, I'm get I'd get fed up with people saying get over it, Kev, yes. Kev, get over it. I mean I've got over it to a large extent. I want to see a future good relationship with Europe now. I know we're out of Europe, but I'm afraid some of my colleagues have not got over it. And and, and, um, and they're the ones that you know, won. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, and I think this is a great problem. It's sullying the whole reputation. I mean, I, as I said, I'm proud. I, I, I'm not here to sort of bang, knock the Conservatives. I know, I know your views and yes. things, and I don't agree with you about a lot of stuff you talk about. Some, but I mean, sometimes I do, and today I do because I think that we all need to examine ourselves and our consciences and also work out how we best can deal with this matter in a pragmatic way um, rather than all this kind of ideology. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, well, that, it's a generous word, ideology, to, to describe much of what drives these, these engines, but I'm, I'm interested in just pinning you down on one thing, which is, that, <laughs> that, that well, because the Rwandan thing is so pie in the sky that I've struggled on occasion to, to imagine where it came from, but I think you've crystallised that thought for me. It, it is because relations have broken down so completely between us and our nearest neighbours, us and the countries through which these people would have passed and therefore under Dublin would potentially have been returned to if their applications failed. So because those communications have broken down so completely, we're, we're sort of dangling in the wind and the idea of fixing or, or making this problem smaller or, or helping these desperate people in these death yeah. trap dinghies is, is, is actually rendered incredibly harder by the breakdown in communications with our closest 
neighbours, geographically. Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, well, actually, this is a big problem. I mean, you did mention just earlier, I was driving, I listened to you mention mm. my, my, my good friend Richard Harrington. Yes. Who is the minister. I hope I haven't course. cursed him, Timothy. I hope uh, the curse of O'Brien, every every Tory I speak warmly oh. of, ends up sort of... <laughs> something <laughs> terrible happens to him. <laughs> yeah, but partly the reason I rang you was to, to, to take away, like a lightning conductor, take away the trouble for Richard. <laughs> I'm not a minister, so they can have a go at me rather than Richard. But he he's a good minister, and he's a, yes. he's, a, he's a decent man, and he understands the problems. But, I mean, undoubtedly, I think what you're saying is absolutely right in that we really do need to work hard on these relations with our with our European neighbours here because there is a willingness. I know we attack the French and say the French are... Some people even say the French are pushing these people into dinghies and pushing them over. I mean, that is absolute rubbish. And uh, the, the, the thing is, we need to work more closely with them in a positive way. Um, people are always going to be moving around the world, more so as climate change and yes. all these other things. There's going to be a lot of movement. We've got to work out how to handle it. We can only handle it if we do it internationally and in a cooperative manner. So, I mean, I'm really upset that, as I said, the reputation which we've had as a country and indeed in my party is being spoiled by these sort of initiatives which I don't think are going to work. Yes. Well, I, I, and obviously I, I hope you're wrong in the same way that you hope I'm wrong, but I can't see any prospect of, of, of the current direction of traffic delivering any form of solution or amelioration of the problems that, that probably, you know, that the people crossing the channel face, but also... The problems that get um, blown up in, in in this country as well. Um, thank you, Timothy, Lord Kirkup. I, I mean, just just pause for a minute and think about a conversation about immigration in which myself and a former Conservative immigration minister are singing from more or less the same hymn sheet, and then just wonder briefly what's happened to to this country with regard to this issue. It's not a million years ago, you know that that was. In the in the last days of John Major's government, ninety five to ninety seven, you know, arch dreadful lefty James O'Brien on the radio banging on about immigration, and a former Conservative immigration minister rings into a group because that's what happens when you deal in facts and knowledge and understanding. You, you can find common ground. You have to find common ground because the facts are objective. You deal in feelings. All bets are off. All bets are off. Uh, that said, I'm rather gratified to hear from you. Thank you. It's 11.49. LBC.